Okay, guys, I do have a Tuesday morning editorial for you, and it's about the Derek Chauvin trial. Now, it's this is one of the most uh, fantastic trials going on right now in the USA, and um, the Minneapolis police chief testified. Uh, I believe he's still testifying today, if I'm not mistaken, but he did testify, and he said some pretty uh, interesting things that could put Derek Chauvin away, I think, for several years. Um, so we're going to go over that. I'm going to intertwine my story with what I'm going to give you from the news, NBC News, and some of the clips from his testimony. Now, the full 9 minute and 56 second video of the testimony is in the description box below if you want to go watch the whole story there, as well as the link to this story. Now, in that below, I didn't include... Uh, where they start talking about a graph and they start talking about the mindset or um, I forget what they called it, um, but a certain a certain training with the police officers. That's in the link below if you want to go watch that full nine-minute video. Let's talk a little bit about what the, some of the things the chief said and see what you have to say about what the chief said in his testimony. Thank you to NBCNews.com for bringing it to us. Last June, nearly a month after the death of George Floyd, the chief of the Minneapolis Police Department, Chief Madaria Arredondo, the first black person to hold that position, described Floyd's death as, a, as tragic and said it was not due to a lack of training. Do you recall, uh, and obviously you're here talking about uh, what happened on May 25, 2020, uh, involving George Floyd, do you recall why the officers were responding to cup foods on that day? The original reason for the call. Uh, the, the original reason for the call was a response regarding um, a counterfeit uh, uh, situation at the store at the intersection of 38th and Chicago. In, in terms of uh, you know, the deployment of your resources at the Minneapolis Police Department and as chief uh, how do you rate, I guess, the severity of that offense, the seriousness of that offense? Uh, it would probably not rise to the level of, um, and particularly in light of uh, uh, last year, the level of violent crime that we've experienced in the city, but it, uh, um, we would certainly respond to it, but it would not rise to the level in terms of uh, severity of, of the crime here. Arredondo said this was murder. It wasn't a lack of training. Adding that was why he took swift action and fired the four officers involved in the incident a day after George Floyd's death. Um, in, in looking at the, the particular type of crime, is that one for which uh, a suspect is typically taken into a custodial arrest? Typically not. And why is that? Um, if, if it's not a violent felon, felony, um, we also, in uh, coordination with our, our, our jail system and our courts, um, we've, there's been a shift over the years to make sure that the individuals who are going to jail are those who, uh, from a public safety standpoint, um, need to be at least in that facility in the Hennepin County Jail. Uh, and if we can I, properly identify, and, and it's not a violent situation, um, um, you know, we can always charge via complaint and other things. And so, um, so that's one of the reasons why. Madaria Arredondo said in June of 2020, the officers knew what was happening. One intentionally caused it and the others failed to prevent it. Yes. Yesterday, this time from the witness stand, Arredondo again rebuked Derek Chauvin, the former officer who prosecutors said knelt on Floyd's neck for nine minutes, 29 seconds. And are uh, Minneapolis police officers trained in the use of force? Yes. In uh, pre-service, in the academy, and uh, also in uh, post-service, at uh, um, the in-service training. Yes. It marked a rare instance of a police chief testifying against a police officer. Arredondo also testified in the trial of Mohammed Noor, a former police officer who was convicted of killing Justin Damon in 2017. Now, Chauvin is on trial on charges of second and third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. The other three officers who responded to the scene and were fired, J. Alexander Kung, Thomas Lane, and Tu Thao, 
are charged with aiding and abetting second-degree murder and manslaughter. They're scheduled to stand trial in August. You use the, 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 the phrase, I guess, violent felony. What's the, what's the more important part, whether it's violent or whether it's a felony? Well, violence. Why is that? Well, it can certainly uh, endanger not only the officers, but the community. Where something that's merely labeled a felony may or may not uh, require a full custodial arrest. That is correct. Prosecutor Steve Schleicher asked Arredondo whether he had a belief about when Chauvin's restraint of Floyd, including kneeling on his neck, should have ended. Once there was no longer any resistance, and clearly when Mr. Floyd was no longer responsive and even motionless, to continue to apply that level of force to a person proned out, handcuffed behind their back, um, that that in no way, shape, or form is anything that um, uh, is by policy, and is not part of our training, and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. The prosecution has said Floyd died from Chauvin's kneeling on his neck. The defense has said Floyd's death was caused by an overdose underlying health conditions and adrenaline. The Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office classified Floyd's death as a homicide that occurred while he was being restrained by police. The cause of death was listed as cardiopulmonary arrest, complicating law enforcement subdual restraint and neck compression. Under other significant Conditions, it said Floyd suffered from hypertensive heart disease and listed fentanyl intoxication and recent methamphetamine use. Those factors were not listed under the cause of death. And are officers taught the standard that force must be reasonable at the time it is applied? Yes. The entire time it's applied? Yes. Are officers taught uh, the need to assess and reassess and reevaluate situations uh, in the field? Yes, we are. Now, Chief Arredondo said, we have a duty of care, and so when someone's in our custody, regardless of if they are a suspect, we have an obligation to make sure that we provide for their care. Prosecutors have said that when Chauvin restrained Floyd, he violated a number of departmental policies that he had been trained in. Are you familiar with Minneapolis Police Department's uh, uh, critical thinking model? Yes. How are you familiar with that? Uh, it was something that I wanted to embark and uh, make sure that it was part of our training curriculum that also includes um, the aspects of procedural justice. Under cross-examination, Chauvin's attorney Eric Nelson asked Arredondo, when was the last time he had arrested a suspect? Arredondo said it had been many years. Nelson also revisited a claim he had made in his opening statement that the crowd of bystanders who observed Floyd's arrest, some of whom cursed at the officers and many of whom shouted at Chauvin to get off Floyd, had hampered Chauvin's ability to render aid. Uh, procedural justice is really, it's, it's actually research and evidence-based um, learning that has shown that if police departments um, treat people with respect, give them voice, um, establish neutral engagements, and um, build areas of trust, it, um, our communities are more likely to cooperate with us. We are likely to be seen more as legitimate. Uh, it is actually shown that our employees are uh, come to work, their wellness is better. And so, um, so this is very important uh, work. And so it's, it's part of that procedural justice I just mentioned is part of that critical thinking in our training. At this time, I'd ask to display only to the witness exhibit uh, for identification 276. Sir, do you recognize uh, Exhibit 276 as being uh, MPD's critical decision-making model? Yes. Uh, offer Exhibit 276. Any objection? No objection. 276 is received. It goes down and down. There's uh, quite a bit more here. Um, this is a very lengthy, well, it's not too lengthy, but it is a lengthy story, so I'm going to let you read it all in its entirety yourself and draw a conclusion or an opinion um, how you feel about this but a couple of things here that that i mentioned are very interesting uh you know the 
defense attorney asking, when's the last time you arrested a suspect? Well, it doesn't matter when was the last time. He's police chief. He's been in law enforcement many years. He's dealt with police officers on a day-to-day -day basis. He knows what's excessive force and what's not. Um, that's like asking a guy who's, you know, rode a, a Harley Davidson motorcycle for 30 years and then, you know, he's retired from riding a bike for 12 years and you go, when's the last time you were on a Harley Davidson? Well, you know, I rode for this many years. I know how to ride a Harley Davidson. Chief Madaria Arredondo knows the use of force. Come on, he it doesn't matter when's the last time he arrested a suspect. He knows use of force. He has been a cop for many years. So even though now he's in administration as police chief, he had to get there somehow, so he was on the street. But then the other thing um, that I found very interesting was when he said uh, the people cursing and yelling at the officers hampered the officer's ability to render aid. Really? Well, then that police officer is in the wrong occupation because if people cursing and yelling at you distracts you from rendering aid to somebody, then you've got ADHD and you shouldn't be a police officer. You can't focus. A police officer has, a, has to have the ability to focus. To you know, That's like a cop going, hey, I have to watch you with your camera and do this at the same... I can't do that at the same time. I need you to go across the street or back up. Well, and you, you look up at the street and there's cars driving by. Well, the cars driving by don't distract you, but the guy standing here silently with a camera does. You see, it's the mentality of police officers. And this defense attorney is falling into that same mentality. Well, he was distracted by the people on the sidewalk. But he wasn't distracted by all the cars going by on the other side of the street. I mean, how many times has this cop had to arrest somebody in public. Was he distracted by people? Hey, that guy's looking out the window. He might pull a rifle. Let's go tell him to close his window curtains. I don't know. Am I making sense, guys, or am I just, do I need coffee? Let me know in the comment section below. Community Leo Watch. Watch your Leos. That's law enforcement officers. To include police chiefs who testify against their officers. Awesome. And from coast to coast.